Hello, I'm Sam Wainwright. I'm the dental product manager at Formlabs. And in this quick uh, video, we're going to show how to get higher aesthetics and better looking 3D printed full dentures. Recently, uh, actually earlier this year, we released resins, a tooth and a base resin for 3D printing long-term use full dentures. And um, in the development, we've learned a couple tricks to, to really achieve the highest aesthetics with these uh, products. And so I'm going to go through that uh, with you all today. Um, so current digital dentures typically suffer from a couple things. One is the, um, the base or the gingiva material can be rather opaque. And since it's not like a traditional acrylic, it doesn't have some of those um, uh, features that uh, a traditional process might have. And then also with the more translucent base or gingiva materials, if you have a long root that all of a sudden stops, you can see that connection and it looks a little bit unnatural. And then lastly, a bulky connection. So the way these uh, teeth are connected when output as a complete arch or splinted, the, the connection can be rather bulky and, and how do we sort of deal with that and, and get a little bit of a better result. So it really breaks down into four main components. Lifelike gingiva, uh, a natural cervical margin, uh, the teeth looking individual in construction, and then also achieving this with ease of assembly and process overall. So again, so lifelike gingiva, and you can see here um, natural cervical margin and interproximal connection. And you can tell by this photo, you know, we are producing some pretty good looking 3D printed dentures, especially for having monochromatic or one color teeth and a base material. So how do we do that exactly? Uh, so first, let's talk about the natural um, gingiva connection of the tooth and the base. And in most CAD softwares, um, you are able to control the, the connection or the length of the teeth into the base. And so what we'd like to do is make that connection as short as possible. So in this file we see we have about a half a millimeter of depth of penetration of the tooth into the base and also a uh, sharp angle in. And in 3Shape and Dental Designer 2018 Denture Design, um, there is a step towards the end of the process right before finalizing or saving your design called coupling settings. And if you notice here, these are some of the settings that we use to get the connection that is optimal for these cases. And if you'd like to learn more, we have a full step-by-step -step applications guide. If you Google Formlabs Denture Application Guide, it'll go a little bit more into detail on this. And I know there are some CAD softwares that don't have this as a feature. And I think uh, this will be something that will probably be uh, more and more developed as things go on. So we set the correct CAD settings so the connection is as short as possible, uh, which helps uh, make it more individualized. So then secondly, how do we make a splinted arch or a connected arch of teeth um, have ease of assembly and also without the bulky connection that you might have otherwise. So we've, in our testing, having the teeth printed individually uh, creates a bit of a complex uh, assembly process. You can sort of start doing two by tooth and then all of a sudden they sort of don't meet in the middle or it just adds a layer of skill and complexity that we'd rather not have. So we do our design splinted in an arch just like you see here. And we actually, after printing and before assembly, will take a, a low speed dental handpiece with a cutting disc and reduce the interproximal connections a bit and also uh, redefine the uh, interproximal um, line as well, the embrasure. And what this does is it allows the, the thinness uh, that we desire on the connection and it sort of hides it a little bit. And here's a quick video of that manual post-processing a little bit here. So here's, we're checking the fit and then we're gonna reduce that uh, interproximal connection and recut in those embrasures. And so during the assembly process after uh, the reduction and, and sort of the getting the supports down and finishing this um, so we're ready for assembly. You want to, in the normal process, take the base resin or the gingiva resin, you wet the sockets, and you squeeze together and use the handheld UV cure light. Of course, uh, we have a video uh, that describes this a bit further, but when you reduce the interproximal connection, obviously that leaves a little bit of a void. So in this process, you want to make sure you're, you have enough resin to fill in those voids and spaces 
Uh, and that's a very critical component because you do not want a uh, hole in the middle of your part, right? And the one thing I would say during this process, and it's actually quite easy, is when you're filling and making sure it's completely filled, make sure there are no bubbles. You get all the bubbles out because you don't want any pockets, right? And uh, after sort of assembly, you combine it. The resin overflow is going to squish out a little bit. And before um, UV curing, take that extra resin and actually you can flow extra as well into the papillas and redefining that connection and making it a bit a, look a bit more natural. Once you have that to a state where you have uh, any overflow sort of taken care of or adding where you need it, you take your handheld UV cure, cure light, a part of the normal assembly process, and it's like tacking the two parts together and making the resins hard. Um, and you can see here with this technique, uh, the teeth look more individualized, uh, more personalized, and the papillas and the connection to the teeth look much, much more natural. Um, and so the, sec the third thing here is lifelike gingiva. So we were inspired a little bit by Brazilian dentures. In Brazil, they actually hand pack multiple types of acrylic to make their dentures, and many cases actually have completely translucent uh, palatal areas. And what this really does and what we were inspired about was that high translucency acrylic actually allows the patient's natural uh, soft tissue and color to show through. And we've really noticed, especially on our denture base LP resin, which is a very translucent pink material, it really, once it has something behind it uh, in the patient's mouth or even on a, um, a tissue colored model, it really makes the part pop and look real, uh, real to life and almost 3D. And on this case, we also are using Denture Teeth A2. We have multiple color of tooth shades. Um, and here you can see with a little backlighting, this is our LP base resin, which um, transmits a lot of light through it. And this will look a lot more um, aesthetic once it's actually in the oral uh, environment. And also taking into consideration the connection of the teeth, so it's not looking uh, like it's just stopping and starting in a strange way. Um, and then, you know, this is really just the summary of that. So it's really gonna make it look more natural once it's got something behind it. The natural um, gingiva color is gonna show through and I guarantee it's gonna be a, a better aesthetic result than probably what you would expect from a 3D printed monochromatic uh, denture base and tooth material. So those are the four main features uh, and steps that uh, you should consider when assembling and creating 3D printed dentures to get the most out of them. But Traditional dentures, uh, when you're using cards and injecting or packing acrylic, typically shorter teeth meant lower strength, right? The longer the tooth was in the base, that's a more uh, mechanical bond between the two materials, right? Mechanical retention. So it's a bit counterintuitive, this 3D printed workflow uh, tra to traditional, because when you finally, after assembly, UV cure these parts, um, 30 minutes on one side, flip 30 more minutes for a total of an hour of cure time, the base and teeth actually become one solid part. The, the, the root length of the teeth has no um, bearing on the strength of the overall prosthetic. So it's a bit counterintuitive. Hopefully that gives a little bit more um, guidance on this. And we do have a really great YouTube video that outlines the, the, the uh, assembly process. If you YouTube search Formlabs Denture, it should come right up. And again, this assembly and curing process really make the parts become one solid cohesive uh, part. And actually, I think that's where it gets a lot of its um, core strength uh, from this process. So that's pretty much it. We're actually gonna do more in depth videos on this exact process with some uh, bench side video and everything else. Uh, we will be adding that content and those extra videos in the description of this YouTube video or, or wherever you're viewing this uh, below. Hopefully uh, you've found this useful and let's make some beautiful 3D printed products. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.